This is Twit. And I am excited to be going to space today with 9 to 5 Max Zach Hall slash Space Explored Zach Hall. Hi, Zach. Hey, Micah. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, so good to get you on the show to talk about space stuff, because if there's one thing I know, it's that you know a thing or two about space and everything we have to do with it, right? I I know a lot about Apple, and I will talk to anybody about space endlessly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyone who anyone who will listen. <laughs> well, today you have a captive audience uh, as they are tuning in so we can talk about space. You uh, wrote a story over on 9to5Mac that kind of had the perfect mixture of everything coming together. <laughs> you got to talk about space, but you also got to talk about the iPad. Before we get to that, though, let's kick things off with what's about to happen. NASA is about to launch a rocket what is this rocket? What is the project? And where is this rocket headed? So people probably know about the Apollo program, the moon mission back from the late 60s, early 70s, where we sent astronauts to the moon. Uh, and we haven't done that since 1974. So we're doing it again uh, in this decade, which a couple of years ago is news to me. Uh, and since then, I've just been obsessed with following every little detail. Uh, and, and the big part of that is, is, is this program called Artemis, which is the um, twin sister goddess of the moon. So there's that connection there. Um, and it's all about going back to the moon, but making it sustainable this time so that you've got not just, you know, go and experiment and see what you can do there, but try to build an economy there, try to have private industry involved as well, and then use the moon as kind of a stepping to- stone toward, you know, Mars and beyond deep space. So that's all very exciting. What's happening Monday is Space Launch System, or SLS, is the rocket that will take us to the moon. Um, And it's the very first launch of this SLS rocket. It's been in the making for a long time. The spacecraft is called Orion. That's what the rocket sends to the moon. And on Artemis 1, the first mission, it will go up for about 40 days and orbit the moon and do a lot of science without any astronauts on board. This is just to test the rocket because it's the first time they've ever launched it and used this hardware and the spacecraft to make sure it can actually withstand going around the moon for a month and then coming back and withstand the heat, you know, of Earth's atmosphere on reentry. Oh. Yeah. And then the really cool part is in a couple of years, in the next two, three, four years, we're going to send uh, a crew of astronauts around the moon, which will be the first time we've returned to the moon since the 70s. And then the second, or the third mission, Artemis 3, is going to be actual boots on the moon. And the really cool thing about it is it's the first time we're sending, uh, it's going to be the first woman and first person of color to walk on the moon. So that's locked in stone. So it, it's not only historic for returning to the moon in our lifetime, but doing it in a way that makes history as well. So super oh, now exciting stuff. You've revealed that I am going to be the first person on the moon. We were supposed to get that a secret. Uh, no, alas, it is not me, but I am very excited about that. That's so, that's amazing. I mean, yeah, we're going to get to watch uh, this happen in our lifetime instead of it kind of having to be stuff that we we take in via media uh, online. And so with uh, the the project. Um, Mm -hmm. Now I understand that it's kind of a a, a sort of trial to make sure everything's good to go. Uh, I imagine this is pretty typical, right? They they tend to try out the rockets a few times before they put human bodies into them. Sure. If you look at the Apollo history, there was a tragic explosion that took the three lives of, of the, the three astronauts that were um, going to take one of the early Saturn uh, five rockets. And since then they, they did, you know, they, they corrected and they did a lot of testing before um, they ended up flying astronauts again. Um, and in this case, they've, they've you know, they're, they're not going to just start out with new hardware um, that they've never used before. So they're doing this uncrewed test, um, which is very cool. They're going to have uh, a mannequin on board called Moonikin Campos, which is, has its own story. <laughs> but they're, <laughs> but they're also going to do this cool thing. With, yeah, they're also going to do this cool thing where there's a tech angle to it, which I found kind of late in all of this, which is there, you know, you mentioned the iPad. Um, there's this partnership with NASA, Amazon, Cisco, and Lockheed Martin called Callisto. And uh-huh. what they're doing is it's is they're they're testing Amazon Alexa in space. So it's you know the first time they've ever done that. Um, first time there's been an iPad go to the moon because there weren't many iPads around in the 70s. And um, you know so that, that's very exciting. <laughs> 
the deal with that is they, they want to see, it's a very minor part of this mission because it really is about testing the rocket and testing the spacecraft, but, you know, throw on what you can. And the, the high level of it is they want to test out consumer technology on a spacecraft because before you'd use, you know, the state of the art stuff, but it, consumer technology wasn't quite space ready. And in this case, you know, compared to the seventies, we have a lot of stuff that could be useful. So the big idea there is how could you use voice control, um, on a spacecraft? You know, you could check flight status, like tel telemetry data. You could see the spacecraft's orientation by voice. You could ask about water supply levels and battery voltage. So a lot of stuff that could be it's useful in the future. Especially with the reduced dexterity that one has while they're in space, uh, that definitely makes sense that uh, being able to just speak out loud and have that uh, work is quite nice. Now, one of the, the things that I think is kind of interesting here is, or that I'm curious about, um, of course, these are consumer facing products. These are products made by companies. The iPad comes from Apple, the uh Amazon Alexa device that is not quite okay. the Echo but has Alexa built into it mm -hmm. is from Amazon. It is I, I think about the reading about the James Webb uh, telescope and hearing about all of the different scientists who basically got on a list to be able to mm -hmm. to say we want to be part of this. And I remember even uh, back in school learning about all of the different. Um, folks around the, the world who anytime it's like, oh, they're going to space, we're trying to test this thing. So researchers sort of reach out and say, can we please put our Petri dish into the payload mm -hmm. that goes into space so we can mm -hmm. test that? So I'm not surprised to hear, you know, I'm sure along with the, uh, what was it? The, not Bodie McBoatface, but the, the <laughs> Mooney. Uh, Moonikin Campos, yeah. Yeah, Moonikin Campos going there. Uh, I'm not so surprised to hear about this, but is this a in partnership with Amazon. And then the second uh, kind of si aside from that is I think some listeners uh, would be would benefit from having a clarification given the private companies or the, I guess some of them are publicly traded companies, but the companies that are not sort of funded by taxes, commercial they are also right. going to, yeah, commercial companies going to space. Mm -hmm. NASA is doing its own thing here, or is it using technology that uh, Blue Origin and the other ones have, have come up with? So first question, Amazon. Let's see. Remind oh, yeah, me, yeah, remind yeah, me the first question. The first, yeah. <laughs> the first question was, is, I guess it kind of is all one question now that I think about it. Uh -huh. Is sure. Amazon uh, helping out more than just providing the ALEXA voice technology? Is this NASA kind of working with Amazon or is it just that, you know, NASA said, uh, and by working with, I mean, there's a monetary exchange like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we, Amazon says, we'd love it if we were the first ones to go to space. So make sure you tell everybody about that while we're there helping make this happen. Or was it more so that NASA, if you know this, mm -hmm. um, said, we want to try this voice technology. There's already consumer tech. So let's give it a go. Yeah, what I would say is that uh, Amazon and Cisco, they're, you know, they're both commercial companies that we all know and we use uh, you know, WebEx and, and everything Amazon. Um, those are the two commercial companies that um, the way I see it is they just you know, probably sponsor in, in some way this. And there's probably a lot of uh, urge to get something you know, more than just this test mission out of the way, you know, more, something that reaches the public in a bigger way. And you can even ask your Echo you know, questions about the moon right now, and it will relate back to you things about this mission. So you can ask about the Artemis program. Oh, so, there's, yeah, so there's a big connection there. And then Lockheed Martin is the other commercial company, and they've got involvement with Orion. So that's the spacecraft. So um, that's the big thing. What I did learn in this, though, was that NASA was only using the language of tablet. They wouldn't say iPad. <laughs> and, yeah, um, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, being me, I had to ask, you know, hey, do you know what kind of tablet it will be? Because, <laughs> you know, you, you could say maybe it's some sort of an Amazon tablet, but no, they said it's definitely right. an iPad. And, um, and what made me, you know, that, that just led me to believe that, you know, Apple wasn't commercially involved in this, but they're taking, you know, the best off the shelf tablet, you know, for, for what this can do. Um, and, and they're going to, you know, use it that way. And then um, your, your second question, remind me there again. Um, just it was, is it is this oh, oh, I, uh, kind of NASA independent project or uh, do the other companies factor into it? Sure. So right now for Artemis one and two, 
it's it's NASA and their their partners, you know, kind of legacy partners. But with Artemis three, the one that involves astronauts going down to the moon, um, mm-hmm. what Orion will do is get to lunar orbit around the moon, but they still need a, a human landing system. Uh, HLS is what they call that, and they're using SpaceX as Starship. So that's a commercial company that we all know about, and that's like NASA is a big customers uh, of, of SpaceX is now for that reason. And so before Starship was just this thing that was SpaceX is, you know, for their own business and um, NASA's, you know, big investment there it says, we, we want to see this be as successful as possible, as soon as possible, because they want to go before the end of the decade. Wow. Yeah. Okay. See, that's interesting whenever you've got them uh, both coming together. And the the last thing that I'll ask you, and you may have touched sure. on this at the top when you talked about this project, but I want to kind of hammer home this point because uh, I saw some folks in the chat asking about this, and I think that other people will uh, be curious too. And I know that it's going to be a question that you are happy to answer. Why are we sending people to the moon? Uh, good question. People want to explore. People want to go. Um, and it's not just a U.S. thing this time. It's it's very international. There's a thing called the Artemis Accords, which is um, several countries, that, not just the U.S., but, you know, maybe like a dozen countries that are all working together for this. So mm-hmm. that's the idea uh, is you, you've got commercial companies that are going to do it anyway, but to get... You know, right now, commercial companies have reached low Earth orbit, you know, to the space station. And they're, they're traveling back and forth and they're, they're going to build their own space stations uh, in low Earth orbit. But to go to the moon, you need government agencies to, to back that kind of thing because it isn't great business per se. Um, that's when you need, you know, countries, nations to be behind this kind of thing and then boost commercial companies. And they, they hope, you know, the, the whole uh, program there, the idea there is that um, once NASA, the U.S. and other countries are involved, then they they build the infrastructure, kind of like building the interstate and the highways and um, trains and that kind of thing first, and then having commercial companies do the rest. And they built the infrastructure and then commercial companies can take it even further. Nice. Well, Zach Hall, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I know it'll be hard for folks to reach you over the coming days as you'll be sneaking onto that rocket that's going into space. Um, <laughs> I'll but- be close. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I heard you're going to you're going to get to watch it. That's a very about, about two miles away. Yeah, it's a good place to wow. be. <laughs> wow. So if folks want to follow you online and maybe see your videos or photos or uh, follow along as that's happening, where should they go to do so? Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Apollo Zach. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-Z-A-C. And all of our space stories will be at spaceexplored.com. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. Thanks, Micah.